I think the band that I'm most known for in the beginning was the Candy Harlots. Um, that was the, the one that, the first really pro band that I was ever in. Some of my favourite friends. I'll play a riff for you. Here we go. Well, Candy Harlots was like the first thing where pretty much any musician's dream from when they start and they write their own songs, they, you put in all the rehearsals, you put in years of building up to something and when you get that break where somebody believes in you and they sign you to a major deal, it's like you feel like you've, um, you've finally arrived at that point that you've always worked towards and what a lot of people, and what you don't realise at that age when that happens is that that's not the end of the trip, that's the beginning of the trip. Records. Some of my favourites in here. We've got Yes, we've got the Stranglers. Now you've got to work even harder to make that work, you know, and to keep doing that. Um, so for me, it was learning a whole new world of stuff, you know. The Candy Harlots deal we got signed to was $1.2 million. That's a, the figure that today, you don't even get the $0.2 million anymore today. There's no money in it anymore come back here and next thing I know I get told you guys are going out on the road with ACDC. And they're all sold out shows, 20,000 people a night. Never experienced anything like that before. So that was pretty exciting, having our first album go into the top 30, ARIA charts, having our singles go top 20, um, getting fan mail, <laughs> you know, unbelievable. band end up splitting up after all that? Uh, it was a combination of things. Um, I think in the end you're only as good as your weakest link. That's true. And then you get ones that have problems that they can't control. You know, like specifically stuff like drugs and alcohol. And they put themselves in a position where the band just can't go forward with them. Which is a shame because those very same people are incredibly talented but if they get crushed under the weight of those kinds of problems, after a while, there's nowhere to go but out, you know? So combination of that, and then industry pressures, industry changes, where labels get sold to new labels, um, things sort of end up that you just, it's too much and you just go, we're gonna give this up, we just need to break up. There's no point, you know? It's, you lose your identity, you start changing members, it's not the same anymore. It's, uh, it's unfortunate, but you know, your weakest link usually lets you down first. I think, I mean, it didn't, it didn't affect personally my relationship with my brother, but I saw the impact that it had on him because um, I was very young at that time. I was about seven, 16 or 17 years old. Um, and the band, you know, the Candy Harlots was probably Leno's first big swing uh, at really making it. We were at our lowest stab in that band where um, we'd only just got a new singer and nobody wanted to know about us anymore. Our management didn't care about us anymore because the singer was the star and he quit. And we got a new guy in and our manager just thought, oh, the band's over. Our audience dissipated. Our booking agency wouldn't return our calls. Being interviewed, getting fan mail, Literally getting, I'm seriously getting stopped in the streets by people, like groups of people coming over and wanting autographs and stuff. You go to that and then it all goes wrong and it stops and you're left sitting at home thinking, what happened? <laughs> Where do I go now? And then, you know, there's a gap after that ends and then jerk happens and they get a second bite at the cherry. We're going to hear some more live music from the band. We're about to have a chat to Jerk. My crikey, you were bloody good before playing live. Jonathan, Lamar, Lino and Charles, good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you? 
and it's another major deal. It's another top 30 album. It's a couple more hit singles. Um, you know, not smash hit singles because it was pretty heady stuff, but hit enough to get to like number one spots on Triple J charts and stuff like that, which is pretty good by this stage. I didn't. I never considered quitting. I didn't. I just knew that I had to. Uh, instead of struggling to figure out why things were never going to be the same, I had to just go. Forget all about what you've done. That doesn't mean crap anymore. Start all over again, which is what I did, and I think that was the best thing I did. I didn't consider quitting, but I did decide it was time to stop for a bit. And one last question to wrap it up. Yep. Do you love yourself? Do I love myself? Ah, uh, <laughs> I like myself. There's room for improvement. There always is. Um, I look back and I think there's times when I shouldn't have liked myself and I could have been a better person. Looking back and seeing that helps me to be a better person. Um, I certainly don't hate myself. I like who I am and I'm pretty comfortable in my own skin. Um, like I said, I'm okay with me. Uh, if I was going to be, okay, this will, if I was going to be reincarnated, and they said, choose someone, I'd go, I want to be Lean OD. I want to come back as me, but with everything I've learned and improve on everything that I've done. But I'd be pretty happy being me again. It hasn't been bad so far. Had a good family, had a great wife, I've played in some great bands and I've got some really great friends. And um, thankfully I'm still creative and I think I'm actually writing better now than I ever did. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with me.